Today we're making a huge family favorite here on Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. We're going to make homemade sausage balls, and not with Bisquick, with real self-rising flour and butter. So, let's get started. Okay, in the cookbook, it's going to tell you to use this Lighthouse Salad Herb Blend, and it does give you an option, if you can't find this, to use fresh green onion and parsley, or you can use them all anything to make them taste delicious right so I am going to slice this green onion down the middle you always want to take out the outer layer of it and cut the end off here where the roots are and the tops off as well and then we're just going to dice this onion and I think one green onion might do it it's just according to how much you want in there for your family because you really just need a couple of tablespoons so I think one green onion is going to work well. Now we're going to use our parsley. Smells good. Now, if you like the taste of sage in your sausage and you can't find Jimmy Dean sage, sausage which is what I like um, you could also throw some sage in there as well we have a pound of regular sausage and we have a pound of hot sausage okay we are going to use three quarter stick of this butter now I tell you in the recipe book that you can freeze your butter and grate it but I'm actually going to cut it in today with my blending fork because it is easy to do so you can cut it into your flour or you can grate it. Either way works, okay? We're gonna use two cups of self-rising flour. And what we're doing right now is creating our own Bisquick and it's a lot more natural and delicious than using Bisquick. I do not like Bisquick actually. So we're actually making like our own biscuit mix here. So there's two cups of self-rising flour, three-quarter stick of butter at room temperature, and we're going to use this blending fork to blend the butter in. Look how great that works. This blending fork is amazing. Um, you can find these on my website as well under utensils, and they're less than $10, I think, right around $10, and it'll be the best $10 you've ever spent. You can buy it through Amazon. Everything that is in my kitchen you can find available through my website and go through Amazon. It helps support our show. You can see this blending fork does a great job of getting that butter into that flour. It's evenly distributed in the flour. That's it, y'all. Looks good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add two eggs. Now I bought jumbo eggs because they were on sale, but just make sure you use at least a large egg. We're going to go ahead and throw our, um, we're going to put in our green onion and parsley. All right, now I'm going to start using my hands and I'm going to mix in my sausage and my cheese. This is the easiest way to do it. Today, we're going to use our new Kasori oven. Kasori has been very good to us and let us demonstrate their products. They've come out with a new oven and it has a lot of features. And I've already used it for quite a few things. We've rotisseried a chicken in it. And of course, we've used it to make uh, cookies and things like that. So today, we're going to use it for our sausage balls. I'm going to show you the controls. It's really easy to use. It does have a preheat setting. So we're going to go ahead and put this oven on preheat. 
so that when we get our sausage balls mixed up, we can bake them. Our recipe says to bake the sausage balls at 350 degrees for 25 minutes. This recipe calls for a pound of sausage. I like to use half hot, half mild. So I buy a pound of each and combine them. You can do whatever your family likes if you don't want to use hot at all or if you want to use all hot. Now, the great thing about using two different ones is then you have them on hand for breakfast if you have people over because you only used a half a pound of each, so you got a half a pound left. So um, this is where I'm going to start mixing by hand. I like to mix this up first and then start adding my cheese. So we're going to mix this first. And the best and easiest way to do this is with your hands and just make sure your hands are washed and your counters good and clean because we're actually going to knead the cheese into these on my counter but I like to do it this way because it gets good and mixed up and you don't have to worry about some of the sausage balls being bready and some of them you know just being all sausage all right once you get it mixed up pretty good like we have it now you're going to put your cheese on the counter and then you're going to start kneading your cheese into the sausage balls. All right, I let Chris pour out this cheese for me so I wouldn't have to wash my hands because I'm just going to get them. I would have just gotten them dirty all over again. That's what's great about doing this. Look, our oven is preheated. It's going to tell you when it's preheated so it's going to be ready when we are and it's not going to turn off until um, we put our food in there. Now, um, we're going to use about 10 ounces of shredded cheese. I like to use the bigger shreds of cheese because these are sausage balls and you want to see the cheese in them so make sure you get the bigger shreds or you can buy a block of cheese and shred it yourself whatever you want to do um chris did get the cheese out for me and put it on the counter so that i wouldn't have to go wash and then turn around and wash again it's good to have a helper when you do these so it's a family thing now we're going to put our sausage out here on the counter and start putting our cheese in it. It's hard to get it mixed up evenly using a spoon. So just get ready to have fun. Okay, I don't like for sausage balls to be too big. Some people make them too big. You want to make sure that you make them small enough that the sausage is going to get done in 25 minutes, okay? So I don't like to make them bigger than a walnut. And I mean a smaller walnut. Don't make them really big, okay? Um, and so pinch off your sausage balls and get them on. I like to use parchment paper. It does really well. Um, it makes them crunchy on the bottom because the oils and stuff help fry the bottom of the sausage when you use parchment paper. All right, we're going to get these in this beautiful oven. And... Um, this oven also has a fan mode, and I'm going to show you that when I put these in. We'll go ahead and turn it on for this batch. Why not? So we're going to slide this in. That middle rack. We're going to close the door, and we're going to hit the start button. And now it's going to bake it for 25 minutes and it's already started counting down. There is a button here in the middle that is a fan. So if you want it to cook more like a convection oven, you can turn the fan on. So we'll see y'all in a minute. All right, I'm gonna put this in my refrigerator. I'm just gonna get out some plastic wrap. Now you can put it in a gallon size bag or you know a storage bag or whatever it is you want to put your sausage in. And um, if you got a scraper, of course, it helps clean up that mess off the table. Look how nice the table looks, and I haven't even wiped it off yet. And um, so I'm just going to wrap this up and get it in my refrigerator. So take a look at that. Don't that look good? You can see the herbs in there and the cheese, and it's just going to be really delicious. Now, the, the clock has gone off, and the temperature is 350, but the oven actually turns off when your timer turns off. So remember that, we're gonna open these up. Those look good. This Kasori oven did a good job, didn't it? I'm gonna enjoy this. We're definitely taking this to our new house with us when we move.
a lot of y'all are asking when we're moving we're not moving until the summer but you'll see us on and off periodically down there at our new home I'm gonna put put these on a little serving tray so we can take a pretty picture of them Amy came in and saw that we were making them and said she was gonna have them for lunch today All right, look at the bottom of them. When you use parchment, they do a real good job of getting crunchy on the bottom. And um, I like using parchment for that reason. You can see that they sizzle on there and actually kind of fry on there. And of course, it's easy to clean up then as well. So we're going to half one of these in half and give it a try. That's how it looks. really yummy and delicious. Make some of these with your family this season. So this oven does tell you, it comes with a manual, it has um, information on the actual door that tells you where to place your food for which setting you're going to use. It has a broil, a toast, bagel, pizza, air fry, cookies, dehydrator, then it also bakes, roasts, warms, and ferments, okay? Now, the pan that comes with this oven is deep, and it's to catch the drippings when you rotisserie a chicken, etc. So if you actually use this pan to bake with, let me show you what I'm talking about. It comes with a rack, and this is the baking level. It tells you that. But if you used this pan, you couldn't just put it in at the baking level because it's a lot lower. You'd actually insert it on this level, which is what we're going to do today when we make our sausage balls. Now, you can also use your own pan. It's really large. The oven's surface area comes back in the back a little bit and round so that you can make a pizza in there really easy. It comes this, with this basket for air frying, and you can tell you got a lot more surface area for air frying than you do in a normal air fryer. So we're excited to do chicken wings in this, um, and we're gonna do them really soon. Or another thing that would be really good is pork ribs, I think. And of course, it has these two attachments. This one goes into your chicken, and this one helps you get the this out of the oven when your chicken is done but it has a rotisserie function as well so i just wanted to show you guys these functions first we're going to turn the oven on it's really easy all right we're going to keep ours on the bake setting the function button is here we're going to press this for the time in the minutes we're going to press it once and it's at 350 degrees we're going to leave it there we're going to press it twice to change the minutes ours will bake for 25 minutes and then we will hit the start button and it goes into the preheat setting now it's not going to start baking until you put your food in there and hit the start again so it's going to keep it preheated at the right temperature until the food is placed in the oven there's a minute left on this wonderful oven um, this is a different recipe but i just want to show you something else about this oven at the end of this video and that is about a minute before the timer goes off the light comes on and that way you can check on your food before you get it out that's really cool kasori i just love you i just love kasori stuff for the holidays thanks for watching colored valley cooks where we cook like mama did